Welcome guys to another episode of Boom Arena and today we're gonna be playing some Viking Bridgetown as even though uh, there were some changes to a Viking Bridgetown and it's definitely not that strong as it uh, previously was uh, it's still a decent choice of a deck and many people still opt to play it I'm gonna get this Viking on a Dark Knight which is like one of the best counters to Dark Knight in the game and then I'm gonna follow it up with a Thief to match the Viking's health uh, with a Thief's uh, speed and uh, ability to wreak havoc on the battlefield. Viking actually will be capable of uh, taking this uh, tower down, which is very cool. I may have played this uh, Ghost a bit too early. I'm gonna play a Blitz additionally to just make sure that I'm gonna delete this Thief and actually perfect defense. Uh, look at that. Uh, I'm gonna actually get one more twins to kite this dark knight and then this dark knight should yeah miss the jump uh, then get uh, kited into my viking and we're gonna get away with once again a perfect defense so uh, basically my opponent uh, guapo with 20 mls is very frustrated right now because uh, he uh, is gonna play dark knight into a viking which is like never a good matchup like a only way you win uh, the matchup uh, with Dark Knight against Viking is you like if you have like a three card like Fawn King or Runners, something uh, like uh, which can basically deal with a super stack of a um, of a Viking player. But uh, my opponent appears to have uh, none of these things. So I'm gonna just uh, he actually plays Mirror Hill Tiny, which definitely isn't the way to go in this matchup. Actually, this Dark Knight will jump on my Necromancer, which is absolutely not a thing you want to see but at the same time we do not worry because uh, somehow some way our uh, okay that, that, was, that was in the optimal uh, somehow some way our twins uh, connect to the tower i'm gonna play viking here uh, just to deal with this dark knight he actually gets two rolling steals in the hope that he's gonna do something wow so much mana spent just to kill this viking and I guarantee you there's no way he's stopping it, it's still, uh, it, it's still alive by the way, piercing archer to finish out the game and it's gonna be GG's well played in the first game where we had absolute counter and I would say even we played better than our opponent, this may be subjective but like a 3 star uh, is a 3 star and we're gonna jump with this fact to game number 2. And we're gonna face off against big black man once again i mean once again i've uh, recorded uh, him uh, facing him in a uh, yesterday's video that's why i'm saying once again and that's why i'm gonna just uh, go in and test his capabilities he actually doesn't want to put up any fight which kind of confuses me as i expected some game to be played i'm gonna play viking because why not honestly uh, that one still doesn't respond to my threat, so that's gonna be a very uh, uh, fast and easy 3-star. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna cut it. That's just how the ladder of Boomarina works. You just have to get a 100% package. Sometimes you... I don't cut out losses, so I'm not gonna cut out these uh, type of wins as well. GG's nice play, let's jump to the next game. And right now we're gonna face off against another 10 metal player with a very similar name concept to our uh, previous opponent also playing dark knight which will mean that we're gonna probably just have a free matchup because like i've said viking one of the best uh, responses to a uh, dark knight in the game uh, we will be definitely having a great time in this match uh, i'm gonna actually play a blitz here just to uh, deal with that Unfortunately, I didn't blitz uh, one more stunfall, and that's gonna be probably detrimental. Uh, I would love to. Uh, uh, I would love to get this Viking on the tower, but the kiting is kiting, and sometimes uh, you just make some foolish mistakes. My opponent will be playing mortar, which I don't think is a good idea. Uh, I'm gonna allow this ice tiny to connect. And then I'm gonna play Piercing Archer to absolutely finish the tower down. Uh, Mortar will get one more hit because I didn't space it uh, well enough, but like it doesn't really matter at this point as I'm gonna play Viking and I'm gonna get away with this play. 
I'm gonna even put a Kennedy Christian Archer, which I absolutely didn't expect. That was a full on prediction against a play I wasn't expecting. So, uh, very lucky uh, on my part, I would say. I think this uh, word just uh, summarizes my experience uh, with this Viking uh, perfectly. I'm gonna play fifth on his Viking Tower to just threaten to take it down. Uh, my opponent plays Bone Blasters, which uh, deal some damage to my tower, but definitely not uh, that much as my uh, fifth did. So he would be definitely better off with uh, some uh, with some defense rather than self offense. Unfortunately, Piercing Archer got uh, a range nerf. Uh, I would say a long time ago, but it still feels as if it was yesterday. Uh, it's not gonna chip the uh, tower. Previously, it would. Uh, that kind of explains how uh, broken of a card it was. Also my uh, ghost will absolutely bug out against this Dark Knight, so it's not gonna protect a piercing archer at all. And my opponent will go for a mana collector, which is like the bravest mana collector of all time, because it walks directly into my attack. With... And I'm definitely gonna take it first of all, and second of all, it just uh, forces me to go there. And uh, since my opponent knows I'm gonna be willing to go there, why would he play a mana collector right here? That just doesn't make sense, and that's why I'm gonna take another Trister in this video. Let's jump to the next game. And we're gonna be having another game against Big Black Man. Uh, I already said why I don't want to uh, say his uh, full name, and I'm gonna stick with that. Uh, he's gonna be playing some very weird deck. Uh, for my liking, I'm gonna actually play a Necromancer against it because I'm frankly tired of him spamming a Skeleton Horde into my face. So I'm gonna just play a Skeleton Horde and basically deny it. At least try to deny it in theory. I'm gonna actually play some Bridge spamming cards and uh, play a uh, play a Blitz as soon as the Skeleton Horde appears on my troops. Uh, and after that we're gonna figure things out from uh, then on. Uh, it's gonna allow my Necromancer to lock on the tower, I expect uh, the uh, Skeleton Horde land right now, but he doesn't play it for whatever reason. Uh, I'm gonna play Prisoner Archer, because why not? Uh, he actually gives me some value, I don't know why. Uh, at this point my opponent may be tilted, I might just uh, be su suggesting it, but it may be true. I'm gonna play Necromancer and it wins, because Frankly, I don't see the word where he stops that. I'm gonna play uh, Thief as well, also very unfortunate Thief, as uh, I was holding the Blitz for the entire time. Once I don't uh, hold it anymore because I want to just play more aggressively, he plays a Skeleton Horde, but it actually worked out for me because uh, then Necromancer spawned a lot of apes, which uh, ended up finishing the tower down. So yeah, that's gonna be GG's nice play, let's jump to the next game. And we're gonna face the same man once again, this time he's gonna actually be playing a Super A. So I expect him to actually run a real deck and... At least from a theoretical standpoint, he should be having an advantage go Okay, he plays Digger and then Super Devil, which absolutely throws uh, away down the window my monologue about how Super Ape 2.6 uh, actually has a matchup against Viking Bridge Stump, but yeah. Uh, Viking will get one hit, maybe two hits, there we go. Uh, Thief will continue a damage, and unfortunately that's another Twister. Like I said, I'm not gonna cut uh, these things out, because I want to, like, provide for you a real ladder experience in this uh, video, so we're gonna just uh, cruise through this. Let's jump to the next game. And right now we're gonna be facing a Legend Sniper with 500 medals, which is pretty enough, I would say, to call someone already a good player, so we're gonna just do that. Play a game against good player, and uh, he starts with a heal tiny and a steel hammer, which is definitely not a uh, common choice of cards that you see, but at the same time it's not like too weird. So we're gonna actually try to counter these uh, twins uh, by not countering it. Very well said. Uh, my opponent will be playing some kind of a bridge spam, so uh, I'll have to be a bit careful about that. Unfortunately, my piercing archer wasn't able to stop my opponent uh, from uh, he, my opponent's twins from connecting, so that's gonna be a bit embarrassing. I'm gonna play Viking in the back. Actually, I don't see 
how my opponent can punish this move, even though he gets two hits with Steel Hammer, I really don't care because if he plays Twins on the opposite side, I can just play Ghost and I'm gonna be absolutely fine. Uh, my opponent still waits, which is rather concerning. I'm gonna be playing a uh, Flying Bomb and Blitz, and my opponent has absolutely no money to deal with it. That's why playing three Gunners is very risky. If your opponent knows what he's doing, uh, I'm gonna just get away with such a bullcrap move. I've just played two spells on his only defensive resource and I think that's gonna be a wrap uh, on this game as he calls uh, me noob. Maybe rightfully so. If I were if I were not to have these two spells, I would be in a serious trouble, but now I'm just getting away with a crime pretty much. I'm gonna play twins. Uh, I'm gonna play a. Uh, actually, I don't know. I'm gonna maybe play a fifth. Uh, protect the piercing archer. I'm gonna play a flying bomb on uh, on his uh, mana collector because I don't want him to get more uh, advantage. And the next, okay, he's gonna actually play another mana collector, which is kind of smart. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, he's kind of smart. So uh, we're go not gonna laugh off his play. Uh, this time I'm not gonna play a mana collector on his uh, 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 I mean I'm not gonna play a flying bomb on his mana collectors uh, because uh, he may go for a three gunners and that's pretty much the only way we can lose this so we're gonna just uh, be very uh, patient about this I'm gonna play a twins here which was a very bad set of twins uh, I shouldn't be allowing him to get a free uh, free damage on my piercing archer. And yeah, at this point, uh, I'm I'm very sorry to my opponent because uh, there's absolutely nothing he can do. He says not good because I pretty much just outplay outplayed him in one interaction, and the rest of the game was spent by him actually playing better because I didn't have to play better. I just I just had to play solidly and not allow him to generate any play and that was pretty much the name of the game. So yeah, GG's nice play, let's jump to the probably last game of the video. Yeah, I'm kinda tired of just winning over and over again with, without my opponent putting up the fight and once my opponent actually is putting up the fight, he's finding himself in a very bad matchup just because of this one interaction. So yeah, without further yap, let's jump to the final game of today's video. And the last game of today's video will be very likely against MO4D, which uh, I don't know, maybe means mode. Uh, I'll try to guess that. Uh, either way, he's gonna be having a zero melt. I'm gonna be playing very aggressively against him because he di didn't play anything against my twins until they crossed the uh, bridge. And that's why I'm gonna be having a lot of potential to just get uh, away with a crime. And. That's gonna be, once again, a name of the game. I'm gonna play a fifth, which I think, yeah, it was a, a bad played fifth, because this can we won't cross the bridge. Even though, actually, to, it may die, I'm gonna play Flying Bomb, since there's no reason to make things complicated anymore. Usually, uh, that's the uh, general strategy of pretty much every single deck that exists. Uh, it is, if you don't have the advantage, uh, make things complicated so you can gain one. And if you're winning, uh, do not overcomplicate things and just play simple. Here I should have played Blitz to just uh, keep it simple, but I want uh, to actually get a 3-star against my opponent, and to get a 3-star you have to get the advantage, and to get the advantage you have to make the things complicated, and I'm right now making things complicated by playing troops instead of spells, which is like the main dogma that I was promoting in this channel for a very long time. If you can play troop, play one, don't play spell, because spells do not get generate the advantage for you, and if you don't know the score of the game yet, it's always better to just play troop uh, to potentially generate uh, the advantage for yourself. Sure, your opponent may be like the luckiest player alive, and he may uh, be like the prediction god and absolutely shred you, but the chances are, if you're playing solidly, uh, the chances are so small. Uh, I'm gonna actually just go with this attack. And my opponent will be having a trouble against this Necromancer once again. I probably should have played a Blitz here to protect it, but it doesn't really matter since I've taken this tower down. Uh, I'm gonna actually play Fifth to just finish the other tower down. 
if my opponent won't be okay, my opponent won't be willing to protect that. That's absolutely perfect. I'm gonna play a piercing archer in the back actually because honestly, why not? Uh, right now, very instructive moment. Now I'm gonna blitz because my opponent is actually threatening to deal a lot of damage. And one way to prevent it is to absolutely not play his game, but just to simplify. And my piercing archer is absolutely doing a great job at everything, honestly. I'm gonna play Necromancer right here, uh, predicting his devils. I'm gonna actually get a read, and that's gonna be GG's nice plate. The last game of today's video, I actually against, I don't know, uh, quasi Viking Birdstar, maybe. Uh, either way, uh, we get away with a nice dub, and that's gonna be mark of today's video. Uh, if you uh, if you enjoyed this, absolutely, I uh, invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's uh, completely free, and you may learn something about this strategy game called Boom Arena. I post uh, videos every single day about different decks, different strategies. You may, uh, like I've said, like my gameplay, you may enjoy it, you may learn something. Uh, sky's the limit. So yeah, thanks for watching till the end. I'm gonna see you guys in the next episode of Boom Arena.